Hi, I'm Daniel D'Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part one on the lecture on permutations and combinations. Let's get started. All right, so before we get into permutations and combinations, let's learn the simple art of counting with an example. All right, so say you have a friend. He comes to you and he gives you five blocks of wood. On each block of wood is a letter, right? A, B, C, D, E. So let's write that down. So suppose we have something like A, B, C, D, and E, right? Now, he tells you to do a simple task. He says, I need to find all the possible ways you could arrange these five letters, right? And he leaves. Now, what's the first thing you do? You're like, okay, what's the simplest way I could just make one change? So you do something like this. You interchange the first and the second letter, right? So you will get something like B, A, C, D, E, right? Now, your friend comes back, he looks at it and he's like, okay, you got what I meant, right? And he acknowledges that this is, that this is a different arrangement. Correct? Now he says, find all the possible ways you could do this. And he leaves. Now what you have to do is you have to try and find out all the possible ways, right? Would you really sit and arrange all of these? No, right? Because there's a simple way to find that out. Let's make it interesting. Suppose you have a bag, right? And you put all these five letters in. You put A, you put B, you put C, you put D, and you put E, right? Now what you're going to do is you're going to put your hand in the bag and get out a block at a time. And let's say you have five positions for this. So you have one, two, three, four, and five, right? So the first time you put your hand into the bag and you pull out a block. Now, think about it. The first time when you put it in the bag, right? You have five different blocks to choose from, right? So what could come in this position are five different options, right? You could have picked up any block. So let's write five here, correct? Now, now once you've removed one block and you've put it out, suppose you picked up an A, right? Now in the bag is B, C, D, and E, four blocks, right? So when you put your hand in for the second time and you pull out a block, you have four different options that you could choose from. It could be anything, right? But you have just four options. So for the second spot, when you're trying to fill it, it's just gonna be four options, right? That goes down in three, two, and for the last one, when, you've, when you have a bag of five blocks and you've picked out four blocks, you have just one block left. So you only have one option here. That is the last remaining block, correct? All right, simply multiply these chances. So if you look at it, it's just simply five into four, into three, into two, into one, right? So five was a 20, 23 is a 60, 62 is a 120, right? So this is basically 120. Now, 120 is the number of ways that you could arrange five unique letters. There is a pattern to this, right? Now look at the number of letters you have and look at the formula that we just created, right? So you have A, B, C, D, E, five letters, and you see that the formula here that we use to try and find it out without actually sitting and arranging all of them is five into four into three into two into one, right? So it starts at the number of unique blocks and then just goes down by one up to one, right? And this is called a factorial. So it's denoted by N factorial. Now, what this says is this means that you just take the first number here and you keep multiplying it by one less, right? and you keep going down until you hit one, right? This is known as the factorial. And what this is, is basically this. If you need to find out the possible ways to arrange n given unique items, right? Like for, for our example, n was five, right? Five unique letters. The way to do it is just take a factorial of it because by the logic that we explained before, it's just putting your hand into a bag and pulling it out one by one. And the ways you could do it are n factorial ways. So if suppose I had three different, three unique letters, the way to do, the number of ways that I could arrange them would just be three factorial. That is three into two into one, that is six, right? If I had six, it would just be six factorial, 100, 100 factorial, simple as that, right? Now your friend comes back and you tell him that, okay, you gave me five unique letters. The number of ways that you could arrange them are 120. Then he's like, oh, great, thank you so much. Now he gives you another letter, which is another A. All right, so now your letters are A, A, B, C, D, and E, right? Now he's giving you six letters. So he says, sorry, I forgot to give you this extra letter. He gives you the A and he tells you, now find all the ways you could arrange this. And then he leaves. So you're like, no, 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 don't go. It's just six factorial, right? But he's like, I don't think it's six factorial. And he's right, because it's not six factorial. Remember that the factorial is only used when you're trying to compute unique terms and how you arrange them, right? We see that we have two A's. So 
that would be a problem because if you use the same technique that you did to find the first arrangement, right? You just interchange the first two, right? This would lead to an A, A, B, C, D, and E. But this and this are both the same, right? So what do we do? Will this formula not work? It kind of does, but there's a slight change that you need to do. And the way to understand it involves a little bit of thinking. Once you get it, it's awesome. All right, so this was part one on lecture and permutations and combinations, where we found out how to compute all the possible arrangements of n given unique items. Now in part two, we're gonna see what happens when you have duplicate terms and how do you really compute all the arrangements. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. And until then, spread the knowledge.